Hey, this is Brent Jensen. You're listening to No Sleep Till Sudbury, the show where we talk about the music that makes your skin vibrate. And today, I am joined by the legendary Johnny D, lead singer <laughs> and founder of Honeymoon Sweet. Johnny, how are you, man? Uh, I'm good. That was a great intro. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's true. I've been a fan since the debut record came out, and you know, it's a real pleasure to have you here. I'm a big fan, so... It's been that long, hey? It's it has. Like, it's just time just, just flies. I mean, we, we've kept working throughout it all. You know, it always pays off, but it's paid off more in the last, like, four weeks than it really ever has because there was a, you know, a little bit, a bit of a slump for us. Mm-hmm. Now, you've got uh, the new single out. The new single is called Find What You're Looking For, and uh, it previews an upcoming new record, which I think has yet to be titled. Is that right? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, uh, we're not, I'm not finished the vocals yet. I just went and I just sang the song that you just find what you're looking for just before March, before this COVID thing has, has started. And our producer, Mike Compass, uh, lives in Bur- just outside of Birmingham, England now. Okay. So uh, we need to get back to it and finish up these vocals because it's, uh, you know, it's the last thing to do. Mm-hmm. So as for a title of this record, uh, we don't have one. We just thought that uh, we, prior to this, we, we released a song called Tell Me What You Want. It yeah. got like great reviews. It got like about 300,000 hits on social media, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so Mike was saying, hey, you know, we should release this other track. He thinks it's great. And via his record company and via Sony, um, yeah, it wasn't like three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, it's it's charting. And it's like unheard of for me. Yeah, I'm yeah. ecstatic. It's awesome. It's top 30. Now, you know, for me, as an old fan, I mean, the single just puts a smile on my face because I've, I've been a fan for so long that hearing your ah. voice, hearing you and Derry, um, it just evokes this kind of feeling of familiarity and contentment. And, and really, I think that, you know, I was thinking about it this morning, and, and that, that's really your legacy as as an artist, isn't it? Uh, well, thanks for all that. That was really nice of you. Um, basically, all Derry and I and the band can do is write the best songs that we can. Um, put it out there, wish for the best, and then, you know, but you, you never know, expect nothing. You know, mm-hmm. I hate to make the connotation, but it is a lot, lottery ticket. And it's like I was saying, we, we, we haven't stopped. So prior to this new record, we re- re- released like two other records, which didn't do much, but it keeps our fan base mm-hmm. um, where it should be, makes it so that... Uh, you know, I can get up on stage and people are there because if that doesn't happen, then I can't play. Yeah. That would totally kill me. So a lot of thanks to everyone. I'm I'm happy for you guys. It's it's nice to know that Thank you're still you. out there. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And thanks again for doing this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, thanks for calling. <laughs> well, I've got your songs here. So uh, let's get into them. Sure. So, so the first one is uh, Chris Cornell, The Promise. Oh, my. Okay. Have you heard of Richie Cotton? Yeah, for sure. Great guitar player. Oh, geez. So we've done these Monsters of Rock on the Boat. Oh, like that's four right. Or five days. Okay, yeah. And Richie Cotton, uh, there's this outdoor show in front of a pool. This this guy gets on stage. He's got Billy Sheehan there. Yeah. And uh, I've known Billy for you know years. And I'm not sure who, what the drummer was, Dream Theater, whatever, or something. Oh, it was my anyway, partner. Uh, well, okay, you know better than I do, right? Yeah, they they have but, a little band together, Johnny. Yeah, those three yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, the dogs, uh, the, the winery the, dogs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, regardless, so they're playing, and I'm just getting like totally blown away. I'm not like, <laughs> it's like wow. So, anyways, I'll get to the promise song in a real quick in a real quick thing, but sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, so wherever Richie played on the boat or whatever times it were, I would go see him play. Anyways, back to the Promise song. Uh, the Promise song comes out. It's actually a movie. It's a really sad movie. It's political. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really don't want to get into it because it's so sad, especially in these times. It's a long movie. It's it's drawn out, but it's a true story. Anyway, so I'm dozing off. It's the middle of the night. I always sleep with the TV on. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the movie's over. This guy starts singing. And... Uh, I get up out of bed to read the credits and it's Chris Cornell. Yeah. All right. And it's like, wow. So now I'm Googling this guy and it's like, you know, I should have been a fan a long time ago um, because I totally am now. I think it's a great song that mm-hmm. means a lot. And uh, the guy sings like totally effortlessly. And it's like, uh, it just, it blows me away. And it's just a great song. I love the phrasing. I love the chorus. Couldn't get the chorus out of my head for the longest time. 
Yeah. He, uh, Chris Cornell was a, the singer of Soundgarden, as you know, and, and he, um, you know, did really well with them. But like, I was thinking about the song that you listed here, The Promise. And I always thought that Cornell's real gift was kind of doing more acoustic stuff because he had done other stuff. Like there's a song Seasons, if you've heard of it. Uh, no, but I'll check it out. Seasons? Okay. Seasons, Johnny, and Sun Shower. So those two songs are very similar to The Promise. You're going to like both of them. Let me know. Right. Okay, yeah. well, I'll definitely check it out. I mean, the guy, oh, geez. You know, sorry because he's not with us right now anymore, but, mm-hmm. you know, it's too bad. What a, what a great, what a great talent. I wish I would have picked up on it much sooner. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, another great talent, is next with Stones. Okay. You know, th- this comes from Western, is it Western Stars? Western Stars, is, is, yeah. Yeah. So I've spent a lot of time on a plane. And, you know, for the for the longest time, you know, like on planes, like going to England, Tennessee, wherever, it's like, I'm at airports like all the time and I watch people on their phones and yeah. it's like, geez, man, what are you, what are you doing? Anyway, now I find myself <laughs> searching because I'm so bored. <laughs> and I've been a fan of Springsteen ever since I see him at uh, Maple Leaf Guards in Toronto. He was on stage like for three hours. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. I can't do that. So, you know, the guy's, a, the guy's a machine. Anyway, so I'm watching this, this program, this Western Stars thing. And uh, Stone's stones in my mouth you know mm-hmm. this is not like dancing in the dark right you know, like you can understand what that song about springsteen writes in such a way i don't, don't understand what he means he, uh, he kind of lets it leaves it up to the listener yeah. so stones in my mouth to me kind of like meant like maybe i said something or something the night before or something somebody said something to me so i don't get quite the just and lyric of the song mm-hmm. but i love the quality of it i love the orchestrated you know, I love that he sings with his wife. Um, yeah, you know, it's just I think it's just a great track. Yeah, it, it's it is a good tune, and it's funny. I think what he means, he says, "Stones in my mouth, I'm going to spit them out." Makes references to lies. So, I, I, yeah. yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so you know, okay, that's a good analogy. Yeah, you know? yeah. If you, it's funny because when you listen to the song, the vocal almost has a, a Bruce Coburn quality to it right right did you right. pick that up it does it doesn't really sound like uh, springsteen to me you know springsteen is always going here and there so yeah. if there's you know that's a great connotation never thought of it but you know when bruce sings i know it's him yeah, oh yeah yeah that's true that's a good point you're right cold play is next johnny with the scientists this is beautiful music plain and simple right yeah i'm going back to the start this singer kills me um, but the way that the song starts out with the keyboards mm-hmm. and just keeps going from there, the same thing. This is another movie I watched, and this song comes in and just sums up the whole movie. Um, I can't really tell you much about it, but I love the track. It gets under my skin. Like, I'm going back to the start. I'm doing that, like, every day. You know, <laughs> I've been doing that every day for all my life, and it makes so much sense to me. I'm as good as my last show. Or like... If I do two good shows and then if I do maybe my third show is not so good, they're going to remember the not so good show. And it's like I have to make up for it the next show. So, yeah, always going back to the start. I mean, that, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to stay with me for a long time, that song. That's interesting that you say that. Is that something that you had always kind of had in your head that you're as good as your last show? Yeah, of, of course. I mean, with the social media and all that sort of stuff. I say something stupid. I was like, I wear my, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, yeah. it's like, I, whatever comes out my mouth comes out my mouth. Sometimes it's the stupidest things that I could possibly think, of, you know. And then whatever. And then I gotta hear about it the next day. And it's like, geez, I don't want to go up on stage thinking about stuff. I want to go out there perform. I want to, I want to have, I want people to have fun. So many times, like I, I fall. One time, right off the, the intro tape goes on. I run to my microphone. Next thing I know, I'm on the ground. And no like, way. What the hell? <laughs> and it's like, what just happened? Yeah. And it's like, I'm on the ground, and the crew's starting to pick me up, and I realize there's this big puddle of water oh. all around my, right around my, uh, my microphone. And oh. I'm like, oh, regardless, it's not a good entrance. And would you know it, it's all over YouTube like the next day. You know, it's like, oh. give, me a, give me a break. But hey, you know what? That's part of the business. And uh, it's, it's part of what I do. And uh, I got to, you know, shake it off. Um, but I do, Brent. You know, that's just, just what I do. Johnny, that's rock and roll 
right? Yeah, that's rock and roll. That's you rock know and roll. it. <laughs> yeah, that's rock and roll. You know it. Watching it on the ground for like a good 15 seconds, thinking, what the hell am I doing on the ground? And it's like a crew <laughs> picking me up. And it's like, it was like so fast, you know? <laughs> Uh, anyway, these uh, things happen. That's and right. It's so embarrassing. And then, you know, but at least the good thing was is that when they got me up, the, all the stagehands were there to. It was a rainy night. Mm. Right? And I, I slipped and fell. Yeah. But that's oh, the way it goes. Nobody cares about that. No. Yeah, you'd think they wouldn't, but I kind of take it to heart. But, anyways, yeah. even that, you, this is at the, at the top of the show, right? Yeah. And I, you know, I got another two hours or 90 minutes to go. <laughs> And it's like, okay, now I gotta watch where I'm going, all this sort of stuff. Anyways, that nah, was a fun night. I can't even I think it was outside of Ottawa. Ah. Well, I'm sure you've made it up. I'm sure that everybody forgot about it quite quickly. Uh, so. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. No big but deal. It, I'm the only one who probably has not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way it goes. So Sudbury, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know. there's a there's a place that I played there. I remember the stage. It was all cement. All cement. Yeah. I believe it was close to the water. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking so. It was outdoors. Anyways. Hmm. I saw you guys play, uh, you played the Sudbury Arena a couple times, I think, back in the day. Okay, well, I'm sure that we did. Oh, this yeah. Place is, th- th- this place is like not too long ago. I know it was outside. It was like, yeah. Hmm. I'm in Toronto. I, I haven't lived there. I haven't lived there since 95. So I. Oh, I, my. Yeah, okay. I don't know where that would have been, but so I did grow up in Sudbury. Cool. I know it well. That's where I send my tax files. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's it. I, yeah, there's that, that huge building. Yeah, I've driven by there a million times. That's funny. Yeah. Right. Okay, your next tune, Johnny, is by Sting. I love this song, Fragile. This is great. How does he do what he does? I mean, the song lyrically speaks for itself, but the guitar acoustic bit, that's pretty intricate stuff. Like... You see Sting, he's always got a bass guitar in his hands, right? Yeah. Now he picks up this acoustic, and he's blowing a lot of guitar players away. Um, Not only that, just great vocal. And Sting, is I've always been like a huge fan, more so than the police for some reason. Um, I don't know why. Hmm. Um, But you know what? I just, I love that track. I'm so simple, but but I'm telling you, it's so intricate. Like that finger picking and all that is that, that's difficult yeah he's a he's a very talented musician he was obviously a great oh, bass geez. player but i saw him pick up a guitar and just whip off message in a bottle like it just you know so easily he's he's super talented to be able to sing and play and, and do all that stuff this ah uh, and that, that drumming is really intricate stuff too and to follow it and to stay on time mm-hmm. yeah these are the things that i see and it's tough very talented that's all i can that's all we can say yeah it's like what a guy yeah you know this particular song is one that could be on my list too on the show johnny we talk about these songs and what they mean to you and the cool thing about this song and a lot of others is that we can use these songs as emblems and and markers for specific times you know and those songs kind of allow us to have something to hang on to after those times are gone and that's one of those really cool things about music i find well, that was very, very well said. And uh, as fragile we are, it's like pertinent in what's going on in the world right now. It's exactly. Like, okay, like I didn't want to bore anybody with these tracks, but I'm a lyric guy, you know. Um, they, they, they mean something. You had told me that last week. You said, you know, I don't want to bore anybody with this. But I like that there's an element of sentimentality in, in each of these songs because that means that you're being authentic and you're kind of sharing a part of yourself that normally maybe we, we wouldn't see. So I appreciate that. Well, thanks for saying that. I mean, I'm always trying to say be true to myself when I get behind a microphone, regardless if I wrote the entire lyric or not. Mm. I, I have to make it my own. And I think those are the best songs when, when, when a singer or, you know, songwriter makes it their own. You have to. Yeah. I, think, but I think listeners can listen to a song and it's either they believe this guy who's singing or they don't. And uh, I want to be that guy that when I get behind a microphone, yeah, my heart's in it. And uh, this is, I'm singing this and this is what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that comes across, Johnny. I know that's difficult for you. It's the same as the water thing, right? So you don't, you don't see how it's perceived by, you know, the audience, but as an audience member, I can tell you that that is how it's perceived. So. 
Well, this is becoming a nice compliment. My head's going to get out. <laughs> my my head's going to get out of whack here, Brent. Okay, well that's great. Well, thank you so much for that. I mean, that means a lot. Like uh, this this whole thing that's been going on with the band means a lot to everybody. We appreciate what's going on. I think that. Uh, when we get on stage as a live band, it shows. And uh, I think that's what people need to see. Mm-hmm. You just don't want to like go get up on stage and play to a click track and do 90 minutes of song after song after song. Yeah. You know? yeah. If I got nothing to say, then I'll give my microphone to somebody in the crowd. Maybe they'll have something to say. You know, it's a, it's a meeting of music. That's what a live show is to me. And I'm glad that we can, uh, at this point, now I know that, we can continue on even further. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. One tune left, Johnny. It's Ian Hunter and Standing in My Light. Right. When I first started Honeymoon Suite, um, I had to do covers and uh, just covers to get into the, in, into the bars. Mm-hmm. Ian Hunter's best known for all the young dudes, I believe. Yeah. And that was one of the songs that I covered too. Standing in My Light has been. One of those songs that I've sang as a kid and I've heard, and I'm, there's something about Ian Hunter that I just love that is so real. Standing in my light is like, a, for me, has been the, the story of my life. It's like, I don't know what he actually means when he's singing Standing in My Light. I, I can only take the title and say, there's always going to be something or somebody or whatever in your way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, move over. You're standing in my light. And like, I know I'm focused. I want to work with people that are focused. And it's like, when I sing that song, it's pretty, for me, it's like, get out of my way. I I know what I'm doing. I think I know what I'm doing. And whether I do or not, I'm going to do it anyway. That that kind of thing. So that song just, it's a weird one. It's, it's, it's old, but, um, I don't know. It's just, it means a lot to me. And if I can go on just a little bit further, when I was a kid, have you heard of a, a guitar player named Mick Ronson? Yeah, of course. Bowie. Okay, so I was a kid, and I was working with this other band, and I had written a song. Because you know, like, me, I was all about writing songs. Anyways, we were introduced to Mick Ronson from hmm. our, our manager at the time, and he produced like one of our tracks. And there's that connotation between um, you know Mick Ronson and Ian Hunter. Yeah. And uh, it's a real cool thing for me, you know? Yeah, for sure. And as a kid, like working with like Mick Ronson, it's like, come on. It's like, wow. Yeah. Totally cool. You know what's funny about that is that Mick Ronson has worked with a number of other people. Oh, David Bowie. Yeah, yeah. well, David Bowie, Martha Hoople, but like, uh, but younger people. He he produced a lot of their records. He produced a Brighton Rock record, didn't he? Did, uh, did he, he work may with... have. Yeah. You okay? You got it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that would have happened because we had the same agent manager at yeah. the time. Brighton Rock did, and so did Honeymoon Suite. So I'm, um, you know, if, if you're saying that, I'm pretty sure it's true. So, and like, I know he was flying back, you know, from England or wherever into Canada to work with different artists. And I was just lucky enough to meet him like as a kid, like when I say kid, I'm talking like 17, 18 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Around that time, I want to say, because Greg Fraser, you know, Greg from from Brighton Rock. Yes, of course. I played with him not too long ago in a bar. Oh, (laughs) no way. I just, no, I just showed up with him. That's awesome. No, I just showed up, uh, was playing with uh, one of the first cover bands that I, uh, ever when i first started you know yeah you know i was invited so i went up and did a couple songs i gave i gave greg my microphone he he brought his own guitar but it was great to see him yeah people love that guy oh he's a great guy like totally cool yeah well he told me a story that he used to he lived with mick ronson for a little while because oh my yeah they're working together on something Oh, that's great. Well, he's a lucky guy yeah isn't that cool yeah mick is very talented man too yeah there you go well, that's all the time that uh, you've got for me today. I know you're a very busy man. You're probably off to your next interview. So thank you, Johnny. I appreciate this. Uh, thank you. Well, we'll speak again, right? Yeah. i talk to you next week again with okay. Derry. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Well, it'll be, well it's not as if uh, Derry and I don't speak almost every day. So, you know, <laughs> now we have somebody in between us. Uh, it'll be interesting. Long as it's not like another guitar player, because he'll go off on a freaking tangent, <laughs> and I'm seen it like so many times. Not to go on, just just quickly. Uh, this producer guy that we work with, that, that we're working with now, is a is a guitar player phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he's just amazing. I'll be in the studio, and uh, both they're always got guitars in their hands, and somebody will play like a riff or something, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, Mike will go, "What's that, Derry?" 
And then I'm telling you, for the next 15, 20 minutes, they go off into this tangent, yeah. and I'll say, okay, not again. I'll <laughs> see you in a half hour, guys. Bye. <laughs> That's funny. I can't take it. I'm trying to do a vocal track, and these guys are like uh, throwing riffs back and forth. Oh, how did you do that? And it's like, oh, jeez, um, I'm out of here. Yeah, it's funny. No, it's funny. You got to love it. That's rock and roll. Definitely, definitely, it is. Well, in two weeks, next week, we'll be doing this. But uh, you and I and Derry, who I'll be speaking with next, are going to go over your songs and his songs. And we're going to have a conversation oh, really? about that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I, I haven't seen Darius' list, I don't believe, but I know it's going to be all guitar stuff. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Has, has he shared it with you? Uh, no, but I did, I've known him longer all my life, I think. I know, I know where he's at. You know, I, I know, I know what his style is. Yeah. No, that's what we're going to talk about. So if you could guess any of his or if he could guess any of yours, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So has he got any uh, Richie Blackmore in there? Uh, he does actually. Okay, there you go. No, I, I can go on and on and on. Uh, Richie Blackmore, I'm sure he's going to have some Richie Blackmore in there. Yeah, he uh, does. Deep Purple era Blackmore. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's got he's got some good tunes. You're going to like them. Um, yeah, of course. He's uh, He knows his stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate your time. The new single is Find What You're Looking For, available anywhere you listen to music. Johnny D, Honeymoon Suite. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brent. Take care of yourself. All right, you too. I'll talk to you soon, brother. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, this has been No Sleep Till Sudbury with Brent Jensen and my very special guest, Honeymoon Sweet singer, Johnny D. Till next time, folks. Take good care. Brent Jensen is the best-selling author of No Sleep Till Sudbury, Leftover People, and All My Favorite People Are Broken. All titles available in stores and on Amazon Worldwide. 